Hello and welcome. This is Alchemist X, and today we're going to be looking at Rosa's Job Plus that she just got this week uh, for the Halloween. It is the Profane Blasphemer, which, uh, if you're familiar with Rosa's character at all, is, is very fitting. She is is very very edgy in a kind of a comical way, not a Zahar kind of way. <laughs> so. Um, this level right here is the EX plus for the level. I didn't want to do the hell level because that level is a pain. I still haven't gotten the no deaths on it, but I got all the other milestones and, uh, just is not, not what I would call fun, um, nor predictable. Um, but anyway, um, I wanted to show off a little bit of what Rosa is capable of. Uh, well, I talk about just kind of the basic premise of her, her kit and all that. So she is a very, very old unit. Uh, I think she was already out by the time I started playing. And I don't remember when I got her. It was well before the Age of Enlightenment. Uh, she's the kind of unit, like, even actually before Job and Chance were a thing, where I would have taken one look at her kit and been like, nope. Uh, once Job and Chance came, though, that that's where she got on my radar. Because she, um, for a little while, I was running her just as a pure um, Dragon Cavalier because she can jump really far away. Um, and then eventually, once once that stopped making sense, she stayed on for quite a long time uh, running the ninja job but still jumping because she could move a really long way and then jump a long way. And then even if her, her burst um, or nuking damage wasn't insane, the fact that she could usually reliably kill an annoying faraway enemy ended up coming in handy quite a bit. Uh, and then she only got three gates of enlightenment and kind of fell off. Eventually, I, st I stopped using her just because even the annoying faraway enemies were too strong. <laughs> and she just, you know, she just couldn't do enough damage. And then she would run out of skill uses and have nothing to do. Um, doubly so if all of the enemies on a map were um, immune to CC. I was just sad because I always kind of liked her. And um, I would say that this job plus is a big improvement. And not in the, like, they took her kit and just scaled it better. It's, like, it's a whole new lease on life, new role, new everything. Because, basically, her crap job is the one that got turned into Job Plus. And it, it is definitely, like, a Dark Cavalier type of job. It even has some of the same moves. But it kind of incorporates her past history as a jumper. Because, I mean, I guess they would have had to rework her gate too. We'll get into that later. But, um, so it's kind of fun. She's like a better version of what she used to do. Um, still, still doing damage, still jumping, still with the little charge ups. And, um, I wouldn't say it's like over the top crazy good or anything like that. I, you know, I don't have a memento in VCR, so that might might affect that but I'd say she's definitely solid and chances are just because she's so farmable and so old she probably showed up uninvited to many of your pulls that raising her is not a huge deal you know fairly low cost you know aside from statues and sins and all that but they've been pretty generous with those lately um and then factoring in that you know even new players can have her at 15 limit breaks um so yeah, I think she's definitely worth raising for everyone. Um, because she can still somewhat fulfill that niche of, um, like, what I call snipe jumping. I'll get into that in a little bit when we talk about uh, skill setups. But um, it's also just nice because she's got a good base move. Because mobility is often one of the weaknesses of the Dark Cavalier kit. Because I feel like Dark Cavalier kits, they definitely need a little extra something in one direction or another. Because otherwise they just feel a little bit clunky and like n sort of outdated, you know, in in today's um, alchemist code world. Uh, I think this fight is almost over, um, but yeah, she can actually put out pretty decent damage numbers. Um, she's got a couple of charge up options, which is nice. Um, but the main thing is that uh, her damage, while it's not over the top crazy good. She's also a jumper, so she has that extra degree of safety. Um, and then her gate 5 is also something of a boon that I think really helps balance out her kit. Also, I think this might be the first time that Mayakasa has been seen 
Uh, so it you know, took a while. I, I started to make a showcase for her, but I never quite finished it. And her enlightenment is still fairly incomplete. Uh, so she doesn't get a ton of action, but uh, that is a, a digression and a half. I still like her, though. All right, and then I, I intentionally, at the end of this fight, um, dragged it out a little bit just to to see how much damage she could hit. Now, this team was hastily thrown together, and I wouldn't say she's, like, um, optimally specced out. I just thought, like, reasonably specced out to, to clear this map and to contribute on this map. Um, there's a lot of HP drainers today. Because, yeah, there's, like, what, three or four times that I could have finished him off, but I wanted to do the super jump. Because that's, like, one of the big new shiny things on her kit. And there she goes. And, oh, well, something, uh, notification. Those are always fun. That's the fun part of doing this live. All right, and then, bam, it critted, 32. All right, so now let's go take a look at the unit screen. Okay, and here we are at the unit screen. Um, These are her stats at level 95. Not too bad. P attack definitely is up there. Agility is a little bit on the lowish side. Uh, I guess it's not bad for Cavalier. I also don't have an agility gear equipped on her because I um, my original plan was I was going to use the quicken move when I was in that map, and then I forgot to use the quicken move. Um, yeah, I forget stuff sometimes. Uh, like, I pre-recorded the battle, and then I forgot I was in the video, so I was, like, trying to exit out uh, using the UI, but it was a video. Uh, but now this actually is the game, so... <laughs> um, anyway, um, so for... We'll start with we'll start with gears this time. Uh, for a weapon, you know, if you have her VCR, go with that, naturally. And then, um, otherwise, there's a lot of options, because there's a lot of great swords out of there. There are, I don't know, I think offhand I'd probably use the, the Time Stealer Scythe, especially if enemies are vulnerable to stop, um, and it, or in, uh, like, attack debuffing as well. And then you'd have your agility covered. But you might just want the Slash Mod. I don't know how the 5% attack versus less P attack ends up translating. Plus, yeah, you might want an agility gear if you don't use the Time Stealer. Um, that's only seven. Um, I probably don't recommend that one. Um, and then the, uh, the Faustian's got the quick and move if you plan on using that. Otherwise, um, probably either her VCR or the Time Stealer, which I guess is nice because then we'll see what she looks like with the scythe equipped. Did it work? What, what's going on? Oh yeah, there it is. All right, we're, we're being a little tangential today. There we go. That looks more fitting for her. And then um, she's got her four-star VCR, uh, which takes care of the jump attack boosting, which is nice that that hasn't been rendered obsolete. Uh, plus death sentence and evasion and initial jewels. So, you know, not too crazy. But then it also gives the P attack bonus after appearing on the map. And then for the third gear, you know, HP or um, like regen armor, um, maybe something extra, like that Halloween gear, like if you're playing the hell level, it's got these super tough undead dudes and you might want the strong versus undead for that. Uh, it just depends on what you need. I feel like she's one of those characters where usually three is pretty good. You can take care of her basic needs, uh, more efficiently. So there's, there's options. And then, so for abilities, there's also options. Uh, the way I ran her in the previous, uh, like the intro segment, I had her gate five um, uh, reaction, but she's also got her new brand new reaction, which when I go over, I want to showcase all of her moves in the training, which I think that that would be easier and make more sense. And then um, after we're done with that, I'll go into the same level from the intro just to showcase her other reaction because you need to be attacked for that to make sense. Um, I'll go over it then. It's kind of fun. And then I use her gate two in overdrive. I could maybe see swapping out overdrive for uh, the stealth move in a, like in a super specific situation where you need to be able to kill something that's far away and that one square makes a difference. But overall, I would assume that higher attack makes the difference more often rather than having one move. She's already got a base move of four, which is nice. Um, that makes it the stealth less necessary. And then uh, her sub, right. 
I think in most cases her job plus is sub is better, but um, back to what I was saying about the snipe jumping, you may want to uh, have that in, but I, I imagine those would be very specific situations and for general usage, I would recommend the basic dark blade. Um, I tried out, okay, so let's just real quick, I know this is, I was going to save it for the training hall, but I just want to emphasize this. She has a 1.5 P attack charge up that does also raise move, so that helps. Um, I compared it against the um, jump damage charge up on the Dragon Cavalier sub, and it did a little bit more damage on her like big 70 jewel uh, jump single target nuke. Uh, it was like a couple thousand more though, so it's not you know fair, fairly negligible difference. Um, but you know that that couple thousand health could be life and death, so it's worth it to remember what your options are. Uh, but more more on skills later. Let's take a look at her enlightenment. So one through three has been around for quite some time, but you know first one is stats, as usual. Uh, her gate two is really good. It is uh, on her Sky High, which is fairly common for characters with Dragon Cavalier jobs. Uh, just attack boost on it, and then all the perks of unit locking, better jump. Definitely recommend. Uh, Gate 3, do not recommend. Uh, just HP 30, all attack 20, all attack, P defense 20. If Maybe if the P defense was something else, or like if it was all defense or something. It could be all right, but I just don't think that's meaningful enough. Maybe if we got some super beastly P defense scaler in dark, but I I don't know. That that, that sounds crazy. <laughs> so uh, gate four, you know, more stats uh, that she would want, and then her gate five is fun. It's it's uh, going to be reaction driven um, for the two jobs that you would presumably be running her on. Uh, so you get to choose either whether you want her her you her job plus is reactive or just the survivability that comes with a skill proccing HP drain. I would say in most cases I'd prefer the HP drain, but you never know where a Berserk Rosa um, might come in handy. We'll put that to the test uh, towards the end of this video. So in terms of enlightening, I would say, I mean, this is going to be hard because I've had 5.5.3 five, on her for, you know, I almost want to say longer than I can remember. A long, long time. Uh, I think you probably want... I'm not sure between 2 and 5, to be honest. I think it depends on, on what you're looking for. Uh, like, and how how much you're... If you plan on using her a lot, like, she's going to be, like, kind of the center damager on your team, then you probably want to get, like, gate 5 and give her that survivability that she's going to need while you're continuing to level her up. But if you're using her more just as like a, a jump assassin, then probably get gate two first. Okay, so that is it with enlightenment. Um, now let's go take a visit to, oh, whoops, I almost exited out of the game. Let's not do that. Let's go to the training hall. Man, it's, you know what? It, it, it's because um, there's about right now about an hour until maintenance starts. So uh, I'm, I think I'm just like, I'm I'm all nerves. What, I you know I gotta finish recording, and I guess I have to finish recording. I could edit for hours after that if I wanted to, but uh, I just want to make sure I get this stuff out before maintenance starts. Um, oh yeah, I was totally right by the way about Zeng Yi's memento. That's gonna be a a fun and possibly sad couple of pulls tomorrow. Okay, I should have a solo one queued up already. Yep, there we go. So, you know, it's not totally realistic in that, you know, I'd have a better leader skill in, in most cases. In the intro segment, I was using Zengi's, so uh, that's, you know, almost as good as it gets for dark leader skills. But this is, the purpose of this isn't necessarily to show you exactly how high her damage numbers can get. Go away, message. Um, it is to just give you an idea of what she does and in in some case how she does it so the first thing to remember is that it's mostly dark cavalier kit you know I, we see some old friends here reaper's echo dark bringer uh that one's new and soul sacrifice so 
just like new moves sprinkled in. I'd say the sub is where it gets a little bit crazier and fun. But yeah, let's talk about her new moves first. So Tragedy of Red and Black is a a jump cross. So it's, you know, basically replaced Vitra Cross. You could think of it that way. Um, I don't love all the cast times in her kit, but, you know, you can make it work. Just throw a quicken on her. Um, if you can get it to go, you can kill a lot of dudes at once. Um, Kuden is still kind of my favorite in that regard, just because his are, are more instant. Let's see. But then this one, the the Roten Schwartz, which is red and black, <laughs> that one is fun because it's big fat AOE, doesn't do a lot of damage, and it um, won't do a lot of jewel damage either. But as you can see, it got death sent. Uh oh. Um, all right, we might need multiple sessions in here, unless we can just. Sh oh, actually, it depends on how many turns she gets. Maybe we can try and finish this before that guy dies from the death sentence that I totally forgot it inflicts. <laughs> all right. Um, but what's nice about that is that, oh, actually that's just from her VCR. She can death sentence anytime, which I, I forget that because I do so many maps where everybody's immune to it anyway. But yeah, so the more vulnerable they are to CC, the happier Rosa is going to be. But anyway, back to Rotenschwurz. The, um, the fun part about that is that it absorbs jewels. And so the more enemies you hit at once, you can basically get a free move in there. I think it's like, I think it's often about nine or so per guy. So if you can hit like four or five guys, then it's a cheap move. Actually, most of her skills aren't too bad. Just like the soul sacrifice and her big nuke. This one is like her, you know, her giant attack. That was the one that she killed the boss with in the intro. Not too much here because there's no charge up and no elemental advantage. And then in her basic kit... She's got, it's kind of like, she's like a jumping zeal Dark Cavalier, if if that makes any sense. Because they, um, she can get the HP and get the jewels. And if you look, it's not terrible, you know, it's not amazing. But I especially like the jewel one, because that's a, that's a decent chunk. That could, if you only had like 12 jewels and you use that, you're coming out of that looking pretty. And it's nice because... Even though it's a cast time, she's up in the air, so that means unless like a rogue Kaya or gate five uh, archer or something like other than that, you're gonna be safe until you can then land and get the HP back. Even if it's not gonna be a lot, you know, barring charge ups or whatever. And then ensnaring assault is her like charge up that comes with her kit, um, which is you could consider it a, a contemporary of the um, dragon charge from her old Vitra kit. It has the, um, the, like, Dark Cavalier, like, lowers defensive stats. But that's okay. Her defensive stats are already fairly low, so it doesn't matter. And then the more damage they do, the more she'll drain back. So it sort of mitigates itself, but it also increases her move by two, which helps, because then you kind of temporarily get to have that stealth passive that you, you know, most of us would have eventually given up and then Retribution Blade. We don't need to talk about that. We know what that does. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and, and just get this going. So now our P attack is up and crit. Oh yeah, that's that's the other nice thing. I guess it's it's pretty, it's becoming very, very standard that most characters are having skills that can crit. Just because I think in order to stay competitive with damage, it makes sense. So yeah, now it bumped back up. And, um, you know, it's obviously going to be more effective on light units, but still not terrible given that she gets to be in the air and safe and it's 100% hit. So I think that's not too bad. Uh, you know, she's, she's what I would call solid. She could do some pretty good consistent damage. And most importantly, she has ways to stay alive whilst doing the consistent damage. So yeah, that is uh, that is in general her moves. I, I guess I can't really say much about what her memento gives in terms of, or, or VCR in terms of um, like master abilities, but shouldn't be too hard to, to look that up. I'm sure somebody in the comments could, could easily enlighten us. Um, but yeah, let's GTFO here and go back to that Halloween level. Um, and then I'll switch her reactive to the one that came with her job plus. And then let me explain it in the meantime. So it is similar to Avenger, except um, 
she gets a big buff in her death death sentence procking when she attacks and then she just gets uh she just does more damage too so for if you want to just you know kick back relax and let her start slashing away at things and that's the reactive for you all right let's see if we can get to the level without accidentally picking one of the dark training quests there's just too many purple things i feel like i went to like the grape section of the candy place ah oh, there it is and um all right there we go and let's not have her be solo though because oh wait not that team that's a different all dark team there we go. And then, of course, remember to switch it out because that would have defeated the purpose of this exercise. We're not going to do the whole battle. Just just enough to show the enemies attacking her and the reactive going off. And just to see kind of what that looks like from a damage perspective. It's not too bad. I, I feel like that is would be more used in like controlled situations where you know exactly what you're trying to do with the Berserk State. Or if um, death sentence is both uh, viable and the most efficient way to deal with something, which that does happen sometimes. Um, there was an Uzuma EX Plus uh, from way back when, where there were these annoying Mandragoras with shields, and um, but they weren't immune to death sentence, and that was by far the the easiest way of dealing with them. Because back in those days, we didn't have as many. Uh, multi-hit options. So let's go ahead and use the charge up now just for fun. I hope it's not a P attack buff that's going to not stack with that. If it, if it is, I apologize. But either way, I wanted to see see how that goes. I would definitely not recommend doing that in the hell level though cuz she would <laughs> she would not last too long. She did all right, though, um, when I did run her in the hill level. Um, she usually ended up getting killed by the um, undead guys. But she made it pretty close to the end in, a, in most of my runs. I did it a few times with a mercenary and then another one time without a mercenary, which was not the best time that I've ever had. So, yeah, she's just wailing on those dudes. They are um, definitely not as alive as they used to be we'll give her like one more attack and see how she does and then we will probably say goodbye and uh, be excited for Zengi's job plus oh yeah that guy's dead in one hit yeah not too bad um, actually I probably could just finish the level I'd hate to let good coins go to waste um, but yeah, so that is it for today. Uh, I thought that was, uh, Rosa is a w unit worth having and worth raising, especially if you're new and especially if you're on like the free-to-play end of the spectrum. So yeah, um, next week, uh, expect a review for Zeng Yi's Job Plus because I've been excited for that uh, ever since the first Magni Historia Job Plus dropped. All right, everyone, I will see you next time.